Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 17. We are continuing with the exercises uh, for that go with section A3 of the slides. Um, so we've been implementing a, like a, a kind of special version of a VEC, a vector which like holds a list of things. Um, and we're we're halfway through doing uh, these, these exercises which gradually build up this local storage VEC is what it's called. Um, uh, so this would make a lot more sense to you if you've watched the previous video. So please watch that. It's very, very long because there's a ton of work and it, it looks like there's quite a lot more to do on these exercises. I, at some point I may give up, but, um, there's definitely a chunk more work to do to get through these exercises. It's really good, right? It's really, we're like really getting into the traits and stuff. Um, and, uh, the standard traits that you get in the standard library and how they work. Um, feel free to, skip these exercises videos completely just watch the um uh, the like normal presentation videos but also uh, definitely encourage you to try out the exercises before you watch them if you want to learn maximum although you're completely welcome to just follow along for fun uh, if that's what you want to do all right so back uh, jumping back in um we're we're about to work on this test but let's just quickly review what we've done so i have some clue that of what <laughs> so i can remember so we have, we've been defining this, um, type called local storage vec. It's an enum because it has two possible, uh, kind of forms. It basically looks like a vector from outside. And we've been, that's why we've been implementing these various traits that do these different things. But it's either just a wrapper around a normal vec, which is stored, and we know that a vec stores its, um, storage, uh, on the heap. So it's like dynamically sized. But, um, there's also a possibility, if it's small enough, that the items might be stored in a a stack or like a local array, which is this thing here called buff, which is inside this. this. So the, the enum has two possibilities. It's either heap or stack, and the inside stack, if it's stack, then it has this buffer, um, which is an array of T. T is the, like, thing that, the type of the thing that's stored in the VEC, and N is how many are stored in local storage. And then... So this is like, n is like the maximum number that can be stored in, um, on the stack. And then it's the number that are actually in there right now. Um, so basically when you add items to it, you know, if it starts off empty, then it's going to start off being on the stack like this. Uh, len is going to go up as you add more items to it. And at some point, len is going to get bigger than n, in which case it's going to switch over to being just held like a, just be a normal vec. And we've implemented various stuff for it. Um, including, by the way, as ref, which I think they're about to ask us to implement, so we'll have to check back on that. Because um, we, we needed that for one of the other exercises, I think maybe things are slightly out of order. But we've implemented various other things, like making one from a VEC, where it just always uses the heap variant. By the way, that means that sometimes even a very short local storage VEC is actually stored in the heap. Um, if you made it from an existing VEC, we don't bother kind of copying the stuff into the local storage we just hold on to the one that's already on the heap. But yeah, other stuff, like you can make a new one, you can make an iterator from a local storage vec by calling into iter. Uh, what else? Yeah, you can like add things, pop things off, insert things in the middle, remove things, ask for the length, clear it. So here's a good example, just to think about, about how we implement this stuff. The, the len function or method on a local storage vec, basically almost all of our methods have this match self, which says if I'm on the stack, do this. Otherwise, if I'm on the heap, just delegate to what vec does. So here, a vec already has a len method. So if we're on the heap, we just get hold of the vec and call len. If we're on the stack, we have to do our own work. In this case, that what our, our work is, is quite easy because we actually hold the length. So we just return it. Uh, anyway, so all our methods look like that, really. And then there's this bit that we'll skip past because I don't remember what it is. This is the stuff around the iterator. This is the local storage vec iter. Um, and yeah, more and more iter stuff. And then here are our tests. So what we've been doing is going through the tests one by one and like uncommenting them and then getting them to pass. So we've got this, like, can make it from a vec. We can construct one. We can find its length pushing stuff, all kinds of stuff like that. And I added a few extra tests where I felt a bit nervous. Um, removing stuff, clearing, 
iterating. And then we get to part E, which is what, we, what we're at this time. So soon we're going to uncomment this, but let's read what it says first of all. Okay, so what it says is um, you've got these asref and asmute um, traits, which are part of the standard library, so lots of types implement them. And they implement cheap reference-to-reference -reference coercion. So what that means is, you can, if you can ask for something as an asref or an asmute, which is essentially just a same as asref, but it gives you a mutable reference, you're basically saying, don't make a copy of this thing, um, but just allow me to treat it as if it's this other thing. So in this case, I want you, I've got a local storage vector, and I want you to let me treat it as a, a reference to a slice of T or a mutable reference to a slice of T in the case of as mute. Um, and the reason this works, the thing that slices have to be is they have to be a contiguous series. And we know that a VEC is like that, so because it's a VEC, the original VEC, like normal VEC, already implements as ref and as mute. And we also know that local storage VEC it just uses an array underneath. So that is, again, a contiguous series of Ts. Um, so that's what they're saying here. So what we want to do is uncomment the test and then implement as ref. And we're saying, I want it to be as a reference to um, a slice of T or a mutable reference to a slice of T. And as I said, I think we've already got as ref. So let's see how it goes. So let's uncomment this. Not much testing here for something that's potentially tricky. Maybe the implementation will be straightforward, I'm not sure. So first of all, when we uncomment it, does it compile? Looks like it does. So what we're saying here, what this test does is make me a local storage vec. Um, first of all, like make one that is of length 256 and then make it from an array that's only 128 long, an array of zeros. Um, so this will be stored on the stack. And then we call as ref on it. And we should get back um, something which is of type slice of i32 because it's got i32s inside. And just assert that its length is 128, fair enough. And then if we ask for, we make one that's small. Uh, again, initialize it from a long array. When we make it an asref, it also should have a length of 128. So we're not really checking the stuff inside it, which makes me a little uncomfortable. So I think I'd like to just extend this a little bit, but let's just continue reviewing the test. So exactly the same thing, but this time we're asking for a mutable reference. And again, we're not actually modifying the stuff in here. We get hold of a mutable reference, but we're not modifying stuff. We're not checking that that actually kind of works. So I want to do a little bit more than this. So I guess what I'm going to do is um, let's just make one from an array of size 126, and then we'll just push a couple more on. That means this has got to be mutable. So we're going to push onto here. Let's just push on the numbers 127 and 128. So now we've got a vec of a load of zeros and then 127, 128 at the end. Then we make a slice. The length of the slice should be 128. And let's just also assert that the stuff in there vaguely looks like what we expect. So, oh, I've done this wrong. Let's push on 126, 127, otherwise I'm really going to get confused. So the 126th one should be 126, and the 127th one should be 127. And while we're here, why don't we use a cert eek here um, to give ourselves slightly better error messages when that assertion fails. All right, so that's already far too much coding without actually um, trying it. So let's try it. Okay, so um, the first problem we've got is that as mute doesn't exist yet, but as ref, as I mentioned, we ended up implementing at some point earlier. So let's get rid of the as mute stuff. No, let's make this a separate test. Why we have one test here, I guess there's some argument that it's um, useful because it's one exercise, but um, by the way, I hate this test name, would definitely test it. Um, change that, 
if it were my test, but anyway. So let's just do, let's now we've got a test for just as ref. And so far that test is passing. Should we double check that we're running it by maybe adding some kind of wrong assertion in here? Yep, okay, we're definitely running it. It definitely passes. We're all good. Um, and I guess for completeness, we should do the same thing here that we did there. Um, got to make it mutable to be able to push stuff onto it. And let's just make the same assertions, check that they work. So then we're going to, okay, that pass is good. We're all good. And um, it as refs did run. So let's just have a look at our implementation of asref since we did it in a hurry when we were doing it before. So we uh, asref is a trait in core convert. So it's a standard trait, has this type um, parameter t. And we're implementing asref um, square bracket t square bracket. So that means uh, um, allow me to view this local storage vec as a reference to a slice of t. And you only ever talk about references to slices. No, you never talk about the slices themselves. So it's a little odd to see this without an ampersand here. But the reason is because asref kind of adds the ampersand when we actually do stuff like here. This method asref, you can see the ampersand has appeared. So we're saying that our local storage vec of t is viewable as a reference to a slice of t. And in order to have our t and n that we need to say what which local storage vector we're talking about, um, after the input clause we say I need you to give me a t and an n, and the n, by the way, is a, is a number, not a type. Um, and then you just implement this one method, asref, which returns a reference to a slice of t, and the implementation for heap is easy, as always, you just say asref, you just like do whatever this method is called, and then for the stack, it's pretty straightforward. We just say, um, return a reference to my internal buffer. Um, but the length of what we got wrong, I think, the first time we did this was we just said, return a reference to the whole of buff, but actually you need buff up to the length that we also store, um, how much of that, that internal buffer is actually being used. Okay, so I think the as mute the implementations can look almost identical to this. So let's go back and look at our, our mute as mute test, which we've just broken out. And let's do something similar first um, to just check the contents as well, the same way we did. Oh, let's change this to an assert eek. Just makes it easier when the errors are wrong. While we're here, let's do it here too. This should be slice mute, not slice. Although now it's a separate test, we could have just called it slice, but that's fine. All right, these are already mutable vex, and we're going to push a couple of things on there. And we want to also, I want to check that you can modify them later, right? But we'll do that in a sec. So, again, I would actually just separate these out as separate tests instead of having to, but anyway, I won't bother with that level of fiddliness. But yeah, okay. I know that should be slice mute again. So let's do that. So this should now fail to compile because it uh, as mute doesn't exist. So we can fix that. Let's go and look at our as ref, and we're going to do something really, really similar to that. So I'm just going to copy this stuff. I'm going to say. Make me implement as mute. And implement the missing method. But actually, I'm just going to use the contents of the asref method because it's pretty similar. Get rid of this asref method, it doesn't exist. And this trait. And yeah, so the difference between asref and as mute is that um, as mute has an as mute method. Which is, which returns a mutable reference to a slice of t instead of just a reference to a slice of t. The match function doesn't return the right type. Yeah, this should return as mute. 
And this should be a mutable reference to some slice of buff. And I think that's it. I think that will just work. So let's try it. It does work. Good. All right. So what we want to do, though, is check that you can actually modify stuff in there. So via the slice, I mean. So we've been given a mutable slice. So let's change item number four to be equal to four. Actually, before we do that, we better check that it's currently equal to zero. So now try modifying this. Again, this would be a separate test in my world. So set it to four, and it should it should have changed in the slice. But also, I kind of want to check that it's changed in like the original vec. So we don't have an indexing operator yet, um, but we can turn it into an iterator. So we can say vec dot into iter dot um, nth. I think we could take the fourth thing. And then we'll need to, um, I guess, unwrap that. Now, slice mute should be a mutable reference. Yeah, interesting. This this test definitely should have had that mutable reference there. I didn't copy and paste that, did I? No. Okay, so yeah. It might complain because we're not modifying it. So that might be why that doesn't have a mutable reference there, but it definitely should, if you ask me. All right, that worked, and it, it that's worrying me, so let's just make it fail, make sure that I didn't do it right. Okay, yeah, it definitely ran. And for completeness, let's also do the same thing for this one. You can see now, can't you, why they should be separate tests. Let's just check that works. That ran, I mean. Yeah, okay. So it just it just feels like two at least two tests here, probably more. This one should just be separate. Anyway, all right, so that was implementing as ref and as mute. And actually it turns out it's pretty straightforward, right? It's just if it's on the stack, we just return a mutable reference to the thing we're holding in our buffer, otherwise delegate to the other thing. Straightforward. Um don't know why that had two stars, really. Okay, so now indexing which means using the square brackets to get hold of items. Okay, so let's read our description. To allow people to read items or slices from its buffer, we can implement the index trait. So basically, we want to just look stuff up. This trait is generic over the type of item used for indexing. Interesting. Okay, we need, I didn't I need to think about that. In order to make it versatile, we should implement index of a U size, index over a range to a U size to get the first N items. Okay, so that just allows you to use that kind of syntax when you're indexing stuff. Index range from, which is indexing that way, and indexing from a, a range, which is, has both ends. So basically, allow us to do brackets one, brackets dot dot N, brackets N dot dot, and brackets N dot dot M. They can all be implemented in terms of the asref implementation. So it's actually going to be really easy to do this. We just call asref and then do it. Okay, so we won't do a difficult implementation of this. You, you, like, arguably, you might. No, maybe this, maybe there's not even any benefit in doing it the hard way. So we'll do it the easy way. Uh, we call asref, and we know that underneath asref is giving us a slice pointing at either the stack or the heap. And then we'll just index it. So it should be straightforward. So let's implement index brackets u size first. So we're going to uncomment this whole thing. And this really just checks that it compiles, doesn't check that it works at all. So if I was doing this for reals, I would absolutely do a load of tests that check that I can actually do stuff with these things once I've looked them up. And including like, um, mutating them and checking that that works as well, but maybe that would be a, um Does indexing, is there like a mutable indexing as well? Quite possibly. All right, but we, as I said, we're going to do this the easy way. So let's do this near to as mute. And the, the trait is called index. So it's going to look similar to this. Let's copy some of this. Because um, it's definitely going to be 
it's still going to need the T in the end because it's still a local storage rack of T and N. But now this is going to be index U size. And interestingly, it doesn't have the T in here. Is that right? Okay, so let's bring in the index trait and then implement the missing members. Ah, oh, okay, so the T is is included, but it's not a generic parameter. It is a um, associated type. And the reason is you can't have you couldn't do multiple implementations of index for local storage rec that return different types, right? There's only really one thing that indexing into a local storage rec of T can give you, and that is a T. So hence the use of an associated type instead of a type uh, parameter. Um, I know I'm probably laboring that, but um, I've only just kind of got my head around that myself. So I'm trying to help you because it took me a while. And maybe it'll take you a while. So I think the implementation is going to be pretty easy. It's just self.asref brackets index. Right? Uh, with a like ampersand because it's a reference to a T we're returning. Okay. Uh, now the only errors I think we've got are um, because we haven't, we've only done this for index and not in, the, uh, sorry, we've only done it for indexing by U size and not any ranges yet. So let's do a few more. They're going to be really simple. So index over a range from U size. Got to bring that in. And now this is going to be a range from you, so of course it is. Now, how does this work? I haven't done this before. I'm presuming, let's rename this to range. And we're going to index it by range, spelt correctly. And this is going to return. A, a reference to a slice. That looks right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, interesting this that the all we do is change. So it's still using index because basically index just means use square brackets. But then the question is what goes between the square brackets? And here it is a range from, as in it'll be n dot 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 or like three dot dot. Sorry, two dots, not three. So it'll be two dot dot. Um, and the and because we're we're indexing over a range, we're giving back a slice as our output instead of a an individual t. So it all makes sense. It's quite surprising that it's the same trait but just different uh, generic type parameters and associated type. Anyway, actually the implementation is dead straightforward. It's just given the range you've got, get hold of me as a slice and ask for that range. So now we've done that. Range two should be also just as easy. like this. And we don't even need to change the output type because this is still going to return as a slice. We do need to bring that in now. And this should be a range 2 now. And that should be that. And we're also going to do, I think it's just called range. And again, that's exactly the same implementation, exactly the same um, type output. Yeah, that's right. Uh, exactly the same signature and everything. So that should be straightforward. The compiler errors appear to have gone. Run the test. If they pass, we've definitely got to confirm that we even ran them. So let's say that should return 1.5. Nope, it failed. So that is correct. So let's just double check what this test does. So it makes a local storage track of size 5. So it fits on the on the local stack. And then it says, give me the number oneth one, which is one. Give me all the way up to two, which is zero, one. Give me everything from four onwards. Let's just change that. Let's make a different length just for a little bit more test coverage. And then also give me one to three. So that'd be numbers one and two. Because the three here is past the end. Just like the two here is past the end. Okay, that was... Uh, surprisingly easy, wasn't it? Let's read the next exercise. Okay, so now there's no tests for this because the next test is for part H. 
So removing bounds. When we implemented the borrowing iterator, we saw it's possible to define methods in separate import blocks with different bounds. Some of the functionality you write use the assumption that T is both copy and default. However, this means that each of those methods are only defined for local storage works containing items of type T that do implement copy and default, which is not ideal. How many methods can you rewrite having one or both of these bounds removed? Okay, so we've done some of this work already, and I apologize for like doing it out of order because it makes this bit a little bit less easy to understand. But let's just review this whole concept. It's relatively new to me, and I think it's confusing. So we have we have this type called local storage vec, and then we have a load of input blocks for it. So the most simple input block for it, I've somehow put miles down the page, um, which is the one where we do new year. So here is an input block for local storage where we define some associated functions and methods. So here's a method into it. Um, here's an associated function new. You can tell it's an associated function because there's no self here. So um, everything inside this input block uh, only exists if t is default plus copy. So if you if you try and make if you try and call new, but the type you're asking for does not implement default or copy, that new method won't exist. Um, so what they're asking us is, can we shuffle any of this stuff around um, so that it it doesn't need to live? Uh, so, that it, so it doesn't add extra requirements on T. And I think basically we've done some of this already, but let's think about it for a second. So first of all, the new function does require default, and in order to have default, you have to have copy as well. So this has to live here. Um, but can we... Um, can we move into iter? And the answer is no, because we're calling... Oh, well, let's find out. Um, what does this local storage iter require? I think probably um, the same. Yeah, so local storage iter defines its new also inside a block that requires default plus copy for basically uh, the same reason, I think. Maybe not. Um, what if we just got rid of these? What would happen? Everything's fine. All right. So we, I think we can make a bit of a fix here then. So it turns out we added that where clause probably accidentally. We're probably copying it from somewhere else. So we can make a new, a new local storage vec iter. Um, we can call this new function without any requirements on the type T at all. Um, apart from the default ones. So that means that Intuiter can now live in a different impl block. So we can actually make a, a simpler impl block. So the only, I think, the only impl blocks we have so far are this one where which requires default plus copy, this one which only requires copy, and I think... Oh yeah, oh no, there is this one which requires nothing at all. So we can put, we can move that stuff, that Intuiter, into the block that has no requirements on um, T, like so. Now, does that still work? Yeah, everything's still fine. So good. We've made a change to into it. So let's go back to where we were. We'll just go through them systematically. So new definitely requires default, unless we were going to do something clever like um, not initialize any buffer until you added some stuff to it or something like that. But we, I don't think we're going to go that far. Now, other things, other input blocks here. Um, these imp these implement traits, right? So they're not just, this is a standard input block where we just add methods to the thing. These implements traits. So this from uh, vec of t doesn't have any where clause. And the index ones we just added don't have any where clause. So there's no requirements on the type of t for any of those things. Uh, same for as mute and as ref, there's no requirements. Uh, yeah, so okay, so we can continue going downwards. So, new we know push um, does require copy because you, um, you get given a T and then you push it into a VEC. And I'm pretty sure that requires you to be able to copy the T, right? Well, no, because you're using it up. I think it's just that Generally, yeah, if you want to move everything. Oh, yeah, no, wait, let me get this right. 
somewhere I think we're acquiring copy. Is it the push here, acquire copy? It makes sense to me that um, you can't push into a VEC unless it's copy because the, the, the things might need to get... I'm not sure about that, actually. I was about to say they need to get moved, but they can be moved further. They don't need to be copied. All right, let's just try it, shall we? Let's make this not require copy and see what the compiler tells us. Ah, it's the extend from slice method. And we did talk about this at the time, didn't we? So we could implement it without using extend from slice. Um, ah, but that only requires clone according to that error message. So let's try just saying clone and not copy, because clone is a much less onerous requirement than copy. OK, so that looks like the push method is OK. Maybe some of this other stuff. But copy within definitely requires copy, and that's what we used for remove and insert. So let's make ourselves another input block. This stuff, push, only requires clone. Uh, insert and remove require copy, I think. Uh, that makes sense for me that copy within requires copy, right? Um, and that's the end of that block. So we've got a couple of methods up here we haven't checked back yet. Now, why is it complaining at us? Oh, because I've completely messed something up. Yeah, I forgot the curly bracket. Okay, so now it's complaining about pop. So push, it's okay with just being clone, whereas pop, um, right, we're, we're moving something out of buff. Um, uh, so we could clone it. And that mean, would mean we only require clone and not copy. We better run the test after I've done that. Haven't I? Who knows what I broke? Okay, it looks okay. Okay, so now we've actually modified pop, so it only requires clone instead of copy, which is good. Clone is clone is a much more reasonable requirement than copy. Copy is only for like very simple things like numbers. All right, so we're going to leave insert requiring copy because we're using copy within. If we wanted to implement insert, that so we didn't require copy, um, we'd have to change our implementation here to not use copy within which we, we totally could do. We could use clone or something, but we're not going to. Same for remove. So now these ones, len, clear, and intuit already don't require anything. There's no where clause on this trait, so I think we're done. So we've basically reduced the requirements on people using our stuff to be a little bit more reasonable, but still a little unreasonable because you can't um, insert or remove from a vec, from our local storage vec, unless it's the type that you're holding onto is copy, which is a little bit of a rare requirement. Um, but I think it says, how many methods can you rewrite having one or both of these bounds removed? Okay, so we could, I think the things that are really bad here are the fact that insert and remove require copy because they use copy within. So what we would do to rewrite would be to change this, to somehow loop through and clone each one while we move it or something like that. Um, and there might be some nicer ways of doing that with slices that make it simpler. Or maybe copy within is that, but it's no good to us because as you can see here, it requires copy. Um, but I don't think I want to do that. It's just going to make our implementation longer. Um, but that's what we could do and very much the same for remove. You can imagine, like removing is just a matter of moving everything. So, ah, oh, maybe we could do it without even any clone. That would be nice, wouldn't it? We just need to loop through saying, um, copy the one after to the one before. Sorry, move the one after to the one before. I guess if we were going to move, we'd need a default or we need something to swap in there. Maybe we need to use uh, mem swap. Gosh, it's all starting to sound a bit tricky, isn't it? So we won't actually do it, but that would be how you do it. Fine. I think we've answered that question. Let's move on to H before I argue myself into implementing it. 
Okay, so now this has got another star, so we're thinking this is a little bit harder. So a borrowing iterator. So we've already implemented into iter, which makes an iterator that takes ownership of all of the local storage vec and allows you to iterate through them. Now we need a borrowing iterator, which allows you to iterate through without taking ownership of the stuff. Yeah, it has the limitation that in order to construct it, you, you need to consume the VEC. What if we want to iterate over them but not consume them? Or we need a non borrow, we need a borrowing iterator instead of a uh, consuming iterator. Um, so it's going to hold on to an immutable reference to the VEC and it's going to need a lifetime annotation. So that's why it's got another star because we're trying to, we're implementing, we're, we're creating a type which holds a reference and that means we need a lifetime annotation. So add a method called iter to local storage vec and gives us back a borrowing iterator and then implement iterator. So um, implement the iterator trait with the appropriate item reference type and then uncomment that test. This time the test won't compile if you require the items to be copy. I have to define it uh, in a new impl block. Fine, we've already got various impl blocks, haven't we? Because we've got our heads around that. So yeah, we put a load of stuff in, in there. We didn't actually, we split stuff up more and this one needs to be in one that doesn't put that requirement. Okay, so let's uncomment the test and then be driven by the compile errors. For a second at least. I'm pleasantly surprised at how I've been able to do the stuff so far. I was a little bit worried it was going to get too hard for me. All right, so we need a iter method. Uh, let's put it in the block that has no requirements on stuff since they already warned us about that. So I think that was near the end, right? Um, this is, oh yeah, but, but it's before the iter, the iterator we've already defined. So let's put it here. So notice, by the way, that Intuiter and Iter are just methods. They're not part of a trait. We could, uh, Intuiter, there is a trait called Intuiter, so I think maybe this could be a tr implementation of a trait instead of just being a method on local storage work. And maybe we'll get to that in the exercise, it's not sure. So now this is going to return a type. It's not going to return the same type as a local storage vec iter. It's going to return a different type, which we'll call local storage vec borrowing iter, I think. I think it'll take T and N, although I'm not actually sure. And it's def and notice that it takes a, a immutable reference to self, whereas into it consumes self. So it takes ownership of self. So once you've called into it, you can't use the vec anymore. Whereas here, you can use the vec after you've passed it into here. So this is going to be a local storage vec borrowing iter. We'll call new on it, pass in self. I think that's going to be all we need to do. I don't yet know whether we need the T and the N. So let's actually define this thing. I guess it's going to be a struct. And it's going to take two type arguments, I think. Um, how does it do? Const n colon u size, I think, like so. And um, okay, t is not used. So we're going to say there's a fun called new, which returns self, and hold it. I'm getting really confused. <laughs> I'm doing an input block. Um, and I haven't yet made the struct, so let's just break that up a little bit. Um, so we'll just do all the gubbins we need here. Um, so it's just an input block for one of these iters, and we're going to have a function in there. And I've got two lots of curly brackets, but we haven't actually defined the struct. So the struct is going to say, um, let's call it inner. No, let's call it vec. It's going to contain one thing, which is a reference to 
um, a local storage vec of t and n. So we did need the t and the n because this is this is where they appear. And um, so the first thing is the actual type parameter needs to be needs to live long enough. So if I just say tick static here, I think that error will go away. So exactly what that means, I'm not still not 100% sure, but I think it means basically um, t the t the type itself is going to be around long enough long enough for us to talk about it um, even after this moment. So I think that's okay. Um, and then the the error that we're seeing here is that the struct uh, this struct borrows something. It, it, it's a reference to a local storage vector that it's holding on to. So it needs to have a lifetime on it, which means that we need to say that there is a generic type parameter called tick a, uh, which describes the lifetime of this local storage vector. And let's try putting tick a here. See whether it lets us do that because that's less restrictive than putting tick static. And so far it looks like it's okay. Fine. So um, that means that we're going to need a um, a lifetime parameter here to pass in. And right, we're partly trying to make itself, but we haven't provided a local storage vec. So let's. Um, Pass in a reference to a local storage vec of t and n, and the reference is going to have lifetime tick a, and self is going to have. Well, it's already got the right type, so I think if we just say vec is a vec is vec is vec, this will work, and it's something is complaining. It is never used, never constructed. And then there's an actual error somewhere. Um, okay, it doesn't implement the iterator trait. Fine, we'll get to that then. Okay, so I think we're getting there with this. Let's stop it complaining about iter not being used by calling it here. Oh, we can't call it after we've finished with it. So we better make another one, I guess. Oh, can we call it? We can call it earlier, I think. Yeah. Okay, so now we've called it, we won't get warned about it not being used. So, um, we've created this thing called a local storage vec borrowing iter, which holds on to a reference to a local storage vec, but we haven't implemented iterator for that thing. So, um, it's not doing the job we want, which is that we ought to be able to iterate through it. So, we're going to import iterator for local storage vec borrowing iter. And we're going to need a whole load of generic type parameters, like so, uh, which means we need to pass them in here. New size, not user. And now it's going to complain that we haven't provided the stuff we need. So it needs an item. So th this the item is like what. When I'm iterating through, what do I get out? And what I get out is a reference to T, I think, which means we're going to need a lifetime parameter on it, right? I think that's right. Yeah. So all the basically all these lifetime parameters, they're all just saying, if you if you make a local storage vec borrowing iter, then the lifetime of that iterator is going to be smaller than the lifetime of the actual vec that you are referring to. And then that just cascades all the way through here. Everything we're talking about here, any t's that you return back, the lifetime of that t has got to be shorter than the lifetime of this original local storage vector that we were given. I think that's basically what we're saying by doing all of that. Okay, and then calling next on this iterator, um, uh, we'll figure out, we're going to figure out what the right implementation is. First, we're going to check whether this can pass. We'll see whether they give us any hints. Okay, so it panics uh, because we've got this to do here, but it's compiling okay, and everything else is working okay. So we need to think about how to implement this. And I guess the two possibilities that come to my mind are, 
we've already got a, sl a way of turning it into a slice, so maybe we should, instead of holding on to a reference to a vec, why don't we re hold on to a, a reference to an iterator over the slice that came out of that? And then we could, here, calling next would just be a matter of calling next on that iterator. Is that a thing? In which case, then it would be, um, there'd be some kind of inner iterator, which was vec dot as ref dot iter. And then it's so, and then the type of inner would have to be, I'm not sure what, what's the return value of iter on a slice? I think it's a, a core slice iter. So this would be slice iter, and then it takes in a lifetime and a t. Is this a bit of a cheat, or is this a right, clever way of doing it, or does it not work for some reason I haven't thought of yet? What's it moaning about? Oh, yeah, it's never read. Fine. And then we just return inner.next. So again, basically, because we've already implemented as ref. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. That should be self, obviously. Um, we've got a mutable reference to self, so it's okay that this iterator is getting changed when you call next, which of course it will be. Is that going to pass? It looks like that passes. So is this a cheat or is this cool? So yeah, it, it, the, the description said, um, one that contains an immutable reference to the local storage vec. Now, actually, we're not containing something that contains a mutable, immu immutable reference to the local storage vec. We're holding something that, well, it indirectly contains a ref an immutable reference to the local storage vec, but not directly, right? It return, it holds onto an iterator over a slice over, <clears throat> or the, and the slice is like a, a, a view of our local storage vec. So I think this is totally legit. Um, the other way we would do it, if we were going to do it manually, would be to hold on to a reference to the local storage vec, and then next would like index. It would have to, we'd have to also hold on to like a counter of how far through the vec we've got. And then next would return, like index, index into our local storage vec with that counter that we've got of how far through we are. But this is nicer, right? We don't have to do any work here. Especially there's a whole load of off by one errors and things you can get if you're implementing an iterator. So instead we'll just, use an iterator that's already been written for us, which is the iterator over a slice, because we can already get ourselves a slice. So I think we've done that task rather nicely, hopefully. Um, okay, so now they're going back to this stuff about separate input blocks. So yes, yeah, some, um, hang on, before we do that, let's read the test, because I'm uh, not sure what they're really testing. Before we get onto the waffle. So what does it do? It creates a local storage vec with six things in it, so it's small enough to fit in on the stack, calls iter, loops through them, and does absolutely nothing. So let's just do something a bit better than that. Uh, just assert that they're equal. Well, let's assert that... Um, let's also just count them, so... Um, Count them up here and just assert that that we actually got given enough things. So it should be six. But also, let's check that this item is the same as the string version of um, what number we're at. So let's just enumerate our thing. So what enumerate does is it, it takes an iterator and changes it into an iterator of number, comma, thing. Um, and what's the best way of getting that number? It'd be something like this. Um, just turn i into a string. Is that the best way of doing that, or can, is there some kind of like i.toString 
simpler. That's probably better. Any, either way, you loop through, and every single oh, and here's a reference to it. Um, so loop through, so get the iterator out. Count how many items there in there should be six, and each item should be like the string for the the number that um, that is its index in the vector. That's what we put in. Then we drop the vector which is just to check that it didn't consume the vector. So the compiler would stop us if it did. That all passed, which is a little worrying. Let's double check that it actually ran. Okay, and while we're at it, let's also double check that this, this part is actually getting run and, and working as well. Yeah, okay. So surprisingly, it all works. All right, so back to the waffle. Uh, back to the waffle. So, um, yeah, separate input blocks means some methods are not available depending on what your T is. So, uh, so our new method was only available if you had copy and default because, um, was it, uh, yeah, because default requires copy, I think. Is that the right way around? Um, it is available for anything. Yeah. So any local storage vector uh, holding any type of T, you can iterate through. You just can't new one, which would be weird, right? <laughs> but uh, fair enough. We could write some other new method that, that um, somehow lets you make it, even though you don't have copy and default. So, all right. So let's get on to some of the harder exercises. So it says you probably duplicate a lot of code. We can reduce the boilerplate by defining an empty trait and then implement this trait. Why did we, we didn't duplicate a lot of code in the last. Oh, maybe, oh, maybe they're saying. Why? Why? Probably duplicate a lot of code in the last exercise. We can reduce the boilerplate by defining an empty trait. Local storage vec index. Implement that for these things. And then replace the implementations from the previous exercise with a blanket implementation of index. So implement index brackets i for local storage record t, where i implements. So I didn't duplicate a lot of code, I don't think. Ah, I think they were probably expecting us to do maybe the other implementation where you had to um, look it up by end. So I think we might have wriggled out of it. I think that's what they're getting at. So this is slightly annoying because I think they're trying to get us to get our heads around an idea that might be worth doing. And I haven't fully got my head around it myself, which is why I'm pausing. For each type T, each type T, I, so, so it's each set of types T and I and constant N of type U size, Implement index of i for local storage trait of blah, where blah implements blah. So I think what they're saying is that we've got, we're going to have multiple things which need to implement u size range to range from range. Ah, so maybe, maybe what they're missing out is. That we want this iter to be indexable? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused about this. I don't see how that, what they're saying is essentially if we implement this trait and we, uh, we implement, um, We, oh, we say that u size 
and range two and range from and range all implement the ability. Ah, so it's not the previous exercise. It's the one before. Okay. Okay. I think I'm getting it. So let's look back at our implementation of, uh, the indexing. So that was. Uh, I saw it, I saw it. It's not to do with iterators. It's, oh, it's right near the top, I think, yeah. So, yeah, so we're, we implement, we did repeat code here, look. We made index on use size, and we just implemented it in the same way, here, 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 and here. So we've done four copies of the same code. So I think, okay, so now we got it. So we're, what we're going to do instead is we're going to make a trait called, essentially this is like something by which you can index a local storage vec. So we're going to implement that trait for U size. Is that right? Yeah. So we're basically saying U size is a thing that we can use to um, to index into a local storage rack. It's going to have an empty implementation. Can we just put a semicolon here? Or nothing? No, it needs, needs code brackets. Okay. So we're going to implement it for use size, and we're going to also implement it for range from use size. This is, this is quite neat. It's, it looks a little odd, right? You're... You're saying, oh, a U size can do this thing. But actually, the thing it can do is just index into a local storage vector. So it's not too surprising that U size is able to do that. So we're going to say all these things are local storage vector indexes, as in ways of indexing into a local storage vector. Now, the trick is now that we've got that thing, instead of having lots of separate implementations, we can just have one implementation saying anytime you index into a local storage vector index, um, it looks like this. Um, I guess, I guess what I mean is this. So anytime you index into something, which is of type local storage rec index, then this is the implementation. And then we've got overlapping implementations because these are all now no longer needed. So okay, so the problem we've got is that you can't actually index into a slice based on this thing. So have we missed part from the question or is this the part we have to figure out? Ah, so we, I think there's another part of a kind of where clause we need, which is that you need to be able to index by I. So I think we need a where here. This is all getting a bit long anyway, so I'd prefer a where for the other stuff as well. But we can say where t implements index i. So it says where a slice of t implements indexable by i. And I guess we should follow that. So this is, I think we just need to view this. I think we just need this. Is that right? No, that's complete rubbish. Um, you don't do stuff like that in code, you only do it in types. So where have we what have we done wrong? Output is no longer that, it should be 
um, it should be, I think, I output like this. And look at the, I'm not sure, I think it's about to tell me that's wrong because I doesn't have an output. This trait, local storage rec index, doesn't have an output type, so I can't just say that it should have one. Yeah. Um, so I need to put one in here. Like so. And then all of these need to provide it. So here, type will be T, and then the others are all going to have the type as. That was weird. What happened then? All the others are going to have type output equal a slice of t. I think this is going to be OK. Oh, but we'll need a t. We haven't got a t here. So these are, um, no, no, it should be something like this. Is that allowed? No, we've got to have a t here as well. How's that? That looks okay. We'll see if I'm completely barking up the wrong tree here. And whether this was like, this, they knew this was what I had to do for the question, or they hadn't thought of it, or I've completely misunderstood. Okay, so... Now, let's put that bit in the where clause as well. Yeah, I think this, I don't understand why it's bothered about this size here. Because, ah, I think maybe the point is that this thing is not sized. So I could do that. Okay, that's super clever. If that, I'm quite proud of myself if that was the right answer. Okay, so let me try and explain that as far as I understand it, which is not completely, although it's not working yet. And also, yeah, so I might have done this totally wrong. Let me explain what I did, and then we'll think about it. Okay, so um, what we're trying to do is only provide one implementation of indexing into a local storage rack, even though you can be indexed by lots of different things. And so lots of different things are where this I thing happens. Let's put this here just to make it easier for me to read. Like so, so that means we don't need this. This is just replaced that colon part there is the same as if it was all in a where clause. Like so. All right, so we're so we're doing one implementation of indexing into it, and we're saying the thing you can index by is of this special type. Oh, and also um, a slice of type T must be indexable by I, otherwise none of this is going to work because the whole point is. We're going to index into it here. Um, so then we said, oh, well, right, this thing that allows us to index, that we can use as an index into a local storage vec is a trait, and this is implemented for use size. And the, the point of this stuff is, if you index it using a use size, the output type is going to be a T. But if you index it with a range, the output is going to be a slice of T. And then it got complained to me about how you can't use a slice because... Um, it's not sized, and I'm like, that's fine. It doesn't have to be sized. I'm going to use a reference to it later. Uh, so this is this is the way of uh, this is the way I guessed at because I couldn't remember the syntax to say this type here uh, might not be sized. So question mark sized means it might not be sized. By default, Rust assumes everything that you talk about when you talk about a type, it is sized. But in this case, it might not be sized. So we said that here, which means it's okay to use a slice, which means we're down to just this error message, which is confusing me. Um, maybe it's just the... 
No, the return type is defined by the, the index trait. So index trait has a output type uh, that is a reference to self kind of kind of output, which is this thing here. So what we've said is um, use the output type of whatever you're indexing by, this i thing, which is a local storage rec index of t. Um, so it all looks right to me. We, we get, a sl get a hold of a slice of um, t, and we index that slice by this thing index, which is of type i, which we know we're allowed to do because a slice of t is indexable by i. Um, but I guess the output, so how are we going to write this is something along the lines of when we index by, when we index t, slice of t, we get back the index, index of i colon colon output. So what if I just did this? Would that help? It's being slow to tell me it doesn't work, but that doesn't mean that it does work. No, still wrong. So I wonder whether I'm actually doing something that doesn't work, or whether it's just a matter of putting this in the right way. So maybe we're calling the wrong method. So the way to call the right method would be to say, um, we're, calling, we're calling the index method, I think. And we want to call the index method on i, no, on a slice of t's. But viewing that slice of t's, as something that is indexable or by i. So what if we had another type here? No, I think we can just do it here. So it's a slice of t as an index, something that's ind indexable by i. And it has a method, which I assume is called index. And well, we know it's called index because we wrote the code just down. We're in it. We're in an index method. So call the index method on the reference to self, passing in our index. Uh, no, it should be on a reference to self after calling as ref. And that's what we actually want is we want to call I'm quite confused by this. This is it. Okay, this earns its stars for me. So I feel like I'm doing what well, everything I'm doing is right, but I'm just not expressing myself in a way that the compiler can understand. So I think what it's saying is what we're actually returning is an i colon colon output. No, what we're actually returning is a index is a yeah, slice of teeth as indexable. Current current out, but but we it wants us to return a local storage fix. So maybe what if we change the types here? Maybe it's as simple as this. Maybe it's just that. Or we need to be more specific. A slice of t's as something that's indexable by i, kind of called output. And then maybe we don't need any of the magic here. 
because it's already the right type. And that might mean we don't need the stuff we had to do up the top. How are we feeling about this? Very good, because let's get rid of that stuff because we didn't need it. Basically, what was wrong was what the output type we were putting here. We thought we had to define our own type here, our own information and provide it. But actually, index of i already gives us an output type. So all we had to say was we had to correctly name what we get when we index a local storage vec by an i, if that i is a local storage vec index, a t. And um, instead of defining our own output type, which I will delete in a minute, we can just say, what would index give me if I index by that thing? And it already gives us an answer. So that means we can get rid of all of this. Simplifying our lives, not having to worry about this unsized business that I complicated matters with. He said confidently, hoping this will actually compile. Let's try it. And it works. It works. All right. So let's just make a test file to check it really works. But yeah, okay, we saved some code repetition. We only wrote as ref bracket bracket square brackets index once. We only wrote this line of code once instead of four times. Um, and the way we did it was, as I've said many times now, we defined a trait which is something that can index into a local storage vec. And we said for any of those things, that is something you're allowed to do. And the implementation for all of those things, in any of the cases where i is a local storage vec index, is this. The only part that was hard was how to name that output type. We had to realize that, look, index of i already provides us an output type. Um, it knows what you get when you index into it, because uh, index has this output already in it as an associated type. All right, let's go look at our tests and see what they do and whether we're happy. Yeah, they check real stuff. We'll double check they're running. Just for completeness, they're still running. Okay, sometimes the incredulity about the test passing makes me a little over enthusiastic with that. Okay, so I think we're on the last exercise. Uh, DREF and DREF mute. Again, it's hard, so expect some flailing from me. Um, so DREF and DREF mute are a way of allowing you to do star. Like if I've got hold of a vec, I can treat it as if it's like a reference to something else. So I can say a star and then that vec, and it's going to um, treat it as some other type. And what we want to do is treat it as if it is a slice of T. Uh, and the reason we can do that is we can then miss out the star, and then we can just call any method on um, on a local storage vec. And because of DREF coercion, it will if that method doesn't exist on the local storage vec, um, then uh, it double checks whether it exists on anything that you can DREF to. Uh, in this case, it would be a slice of T. Um, so you'd be able to call any of the methods on a slice of T. Let's look at these. Um, so as um, as bytes, That's surprising, isn't it? Um, uh, concat. So that's a good example, right? So you can concat So yeah, I guess depending. Oh yeah, if if these things are concatable then it will concat them. So, um, yeah, the hello world is a good example, right? So these two strings exist in, in our slice. When you call concat, they get stuck together as just a string. And that's because of this magic concat thing, which says that the strings are concatable and the way to concat them is like that. So that's a slightly complicated example. What else can you do with? Oh, well, another thing you can do with a slice is you can call into vec. Um, well, that's complicated because it takes a box. Uh, is there anything really simple? <laughs> uh, well, I guess it's a um, we've already done, but um, this will this would provide it for us. We wouldn't have to do all of that work. Oh, last, get the last element of the slice. That looks like it's defined for any slice. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Okay. So we would get the last method for free if we could implement. DREF, uh, the DREF's a local storage vec into a slice. So 
Um, it says, you must read this section of the Rust book um, before continuing. And I have read that section of the Rust book probably multiple times. It doesn't mean I understood it. Um, it says, don't re uh, confuse deref coercion with inheritance. Deref and deref mute should not be used to like do pretend inheritance. Right? We're not doing that. We're just um, saying you can view a local storage rec as a slice. So why not also let it have all the slice methods? So they're giving us an implementation provided in terms of asref and as mute. And let's read that question at the end. Okay, so we're, they're not actually forcing us to implement this. They're just saying, here's an implementation, try it out. So um, I guess that's because this business is hard work and we have to figure out why, which is our, yeah, the question is why. So let's uncomment the test and see it fail, which it should fail to compile initially. Yep, because there's no deref mute. So we're explicitly calling deref here, but I think it would be nice to also say um, we can... Oh no, they've done that. I've done that already. Look, they're calling chunks, and chunks is a good example of a thing that exists uh, on a slice that doesn't exist on a local storage rack, which is why we're getting an error. Now, what's it saying here? Ah, oh, and then for some reason, I think this is a bug in the test. I think they shouldn't have a slice here. We, we provided a way of creating one of these from an array, and I think probably an earlier version they had from slice or something like that. So we can report that as a bug later if we think that's right. So yeah, so the, the error is uh, the chunks method doesn't exist on a local storage rack, but when we allow it to be dereft and um, viewed as, it, as if it's a slice, then chunks will sort of magically become a method that you can use. And also you can explicitly call deref. Similarly for chunks mute. So we could have done last. The thing I, the, the method I found that I like the look of was last, which would also be of interest. Um, but yeah, okay. And then we, again, I would add things that, that, um, check that, like, you really, when you call last, you get out the last thing, stuff like that, just to make it a bit of a better test. But for this is basically checking that it compiles. So let us do what they suggest, which is pasting in their implementation into an input block that has no requirements, I think. So where's our, yeah, here's our input block that has no requirements. Paste it in, let the formatter format it. Oh, hold on. That's completely wrong. This should go, I pasted that in the middle of another input block, but this is a completely separate bit of impling. So let's put it just here. These are separate input blocks. Right, pasted them in. And um, we need to bring in the deref trait. Like so. They compile and I think the tests will pass. We'll just double check that they, um, they actually are running. Now we've got some warnings. Our oh, chunks is not being used, slice is not being used. Okay, well, we can just rename those to make those warnings go away. It'd be quite nice to use them. Again, You it, like these warnings are there for a reason. Our test isn't really checking much, so it'd be better if it did. But that all said, no more warnings. The tests pass. Let's check that they are really testing something. How are we going to test that? Let's check the length of chunks, shall we? Uh, chunks dot len. Uh, I guess that should be chunks dot count because chunks is an iterator. 
so how many chunks are there going to be? How many chunks of size four are there going to be in a local storage vehicle of length 128? Well, they're going to be 32. Let's just make it fail by saying 33. And again, let's do the same thing here. And check that that fails. It does. Should have been 32. And the second one should also should be 32. And that passes. So we're now we're sure that our tests are passing. And also we've added in a little bit more of a check. So yeah, chunks. what chunks does is breaks an iterator up. Um, and you know, it gives you a new iterator that gives you back, gives you them back a chunk at a time. In this, in this case, um, there's, it breaks it into groups of four. And I'm pretty sure what it gives you each time you iterate through this iterator chunks is an, another iterator that only has four things in it. So it's like an iterator of iterators. Okay. So the question was, if we change the implementation to instead of having this um, gobbledygook, we just said self dot as ref, we would get a stack overflow. Why? Okay, so let's do that and check whether it happens. So where is our implementation? Yeah, so dref should be. If we just call self as ref, basically what we're saying is, can I just deref myself into a slice? Um, given that um, as ref returns exactly like a slice of, um, you know, a reference to a slice, why not just call as ref, right? And let's run it and hopefully we'll see, okay. We have to turn off some kind of optimizations to get that to fail. It seems to be working okay. Um, what are, what do we need to turn off? Oh, unoptimized version. All right, so let's just do Rust run tests unoptimized. I guess optimization like removes. Um, like fixes enough stuff so this doesn't happen. I think there's a how do you compile without optimization? We're already in debug mode. Compile without optimization. Minus O zero. So how do we give args to Rust C? I think we have to say something like Rust C args equals or something like that. Rust flags, yeah. Rust flags. All right, let's try this. I'll give up on this in a minute. Rust flags equals minus O zero. Do no optimization is what I think that means. It doesn't like that. Um, maybe I just shouldn't have a space. Could have sworn it said minus O up there. Oh, maybe it should be just minus O, and we want minus C opt level. So minus C. What was the example we were just looking at? Opt level Z. How do I set the optimization level in Rust flags, please? Minus C, zero. That's what I, I guess that's what I mean. Okay, I now am officially giving up. 
Um, but let's believe it that if we'd done that right, it would have been an error. And the reason why it says hint deref coercion. The reason why this doesn't work is because I mean, it <laughs> appears to work, but let's pretend it doesn't. Um, the reason why this doesn't work is that because of deref coercion, instead of calling asref from the asref trait, this will call asref on a slice of type T, I think, and then it'll end up, I don't know, I don't know about that. This is, yeah, so it's going to view self using deref coercion. I think even though we're inside the deref trait, it's going to view self as something that could be deref to a slice of T, and then it's going to call asref on the slice of T. But what I don't see is why that would cause a stack overflow. So I think maybe I'm going the wrong way about it. Because we want to somehow end up back in deref, right? Oh, maybe that's what it is. So I think it is that it views, it thinks to itself, well, this can be deref to a slice of T. Um, and there's an asref method on a slice of T. So I'm going to call that. So the first thing I need to do to do that is call deref. And it's already in deref. So then it's going to call deref again and again and again. I think that's what's going on here. And so what the way we fix that is we explicitly say, instead of just calling dot asref, we say the asref that I want you to call, that's what this syntax means, which I should have explained earlier and I didn't, is um, um, the, like we can be very, very explicit about what method we're calling here. We're not just calling any method we can find called asref, which is defined on self or something self dereferences to. Instead, we're saying, I want you to call this exact method, which is the implementation of uh, this type, which is local storage record T, which is done in an impl block for asref of T, asref of slice of T. Um, so it's basically saying, jump to the exact impl block that, that looks like this, as this asref slice of T, if I do, if I jump to definition, oh, it doesn't, okay, jump to definition doesn't do what I want. If I just search, it says, essentially by calling that asref in that way, we're saying, look for this exact bit of code, this impl trait, this impl block for asref slice of t on our type. So it's ex explicitly saying, call exactly this method. Whereas before it was saying, look inside self for any asref method and call that. And if you have to do some derefs in the meantime to get there, go for it. And of course that falls apart here because we're already inside deref, so you can't be calling more derefs. That would be disastrous. Why the optimizer saves us, I'm not too sure either. Okay, that was a um, lousy way to finish our thing. But I guess if we'd implement, if if they hadn't give us, given us the implementation here, we'd have implemented it probably um, the wrong way, and then not even known that we'd done it wrong because the compiler wouldn't have told us unless we were running without optimizations, which we couldn't even make it do. All right, so thanks for um, riding along with me on the exercises on all the traits and generics and uh, stuff that we've done. Hopefully, somewhere in amongst all that confusion, you, uh, you learn a little bit more about how these standard traits like DREF asref, all that stuff really works. Um, for explanations of them, as opposed to me just struggling through exercises of them, look at the, the previous few videos. Um, but, but next time we will go on to more lecture style, less uh, watching me do exercises style, um, on to the next section. So see you there. Thanks for watching.